Hello all. Welcome to Stingray Tom's Florida and a Take 5 for Florida History. Today I'll be looking at Florida's official state symbols, things such as the official bird, mammal, flower, and rock. As you may know, all U.S. states have official symbols beyond their flag and seal. This will be the first part in a series of videos on the symbols of Florida and where to find them around the Sunshine State. By the way, the Sunshine State is Florida's official nickname. As of 2020, there are a total of 46 official state symbols. Yes, 46. These include a citrus archive, a festival, a rodeo, an opera program, and oddly enough, three railroad museums. This video will cover the how and why of Florida state symbols. It's helpful to share the background on the subject. Today, I'll focus on the structure of how Florida creates and handles its symbols. I may take a deeper dive into how state symbols began in a later video, but that doesn't have a lot to do with Florida. The Florida Legislature, comprised of the House of Representatives and the Senate, passed laws that create an official state symbol. The process is like making any other law. Once it passes both houses and the governor signs it, it's a law. You can actually see a list of these in all other Florida laws in the online state statutes. In the statutes, the laws concerning the symbols fall under the management of the executive branch and are handled by the Secretary of State as part of their role as Chief Cultural Officer. If you look for them in the statutes, they are under Title IV, Section 15. You can see many of them listed here. As an example, here is Statute 15.033 that makes a horse conch the state shell. It also shows that the law was passed in 1969. In Section 15, there are 41 statutes that cover 44 symbols. The manatee, the state marine mammal, and the dolphin, the saltwater mammal, are combined in one statute. The previously mentioned three railroad museums are combined in another, hence 41 statutes for 44 symbols. Interestingly, two well-known symbols are not in the statutes, the state flower and state bird. See, the orange blossom and the mockingbird were determined differently, possibly because they're the oldest of the state symbols we'll cover. Both were created by the legislature with concurrent resolutions. A concurrent resolution is a legal measure that's non-binding, which means it doesn't rise to the level of an actual statutory law. They are typically adopted if authority of law is not necessary, as in the case of an award or recognition. Because they are non-binding, they don't get placed in the state statutes. The first of Florida's state symbols was the orange blossom. In 1909, the Florida House of Representatives passed House Concurrent Resolution No. 14. Whereas it appears that a majority of the states of the United States of America have by legislative enactment chosen a particular flower to be known as a state flower, and whereas the state of Florida is universally known as the land of flowers, therefore be it resolved by the House of Representatives, the Senate concurring, that the orange blossom be, and the same is hereby chosen and designated as, the state flower in and for the state of Florida. The mockingbird was likewise designated by the legislature through Senate Concurrent Resolution No. 3 of the 1927 legislative session. Each of the other 44 state symbols were passed as actual laws, though the first of these didn't happen until well after World War II. In 1953, the sable palm got the nod as a state tree. Sixty-five years later, the Florida cracker cattle was designated as the official heritage cattle breed in 2018. When viewed as a whole, the list of symbols seems to be rather disjointed. This was probably inevitable, and it's likely that the spread of time between choices and the lack of continuity between legislatures are the cause. For example, the Florida panther, which is a mammal, is the state animal, while the state also has an official marine and saltwater mammal, as well as an official horse and cattle breed. 
In total, there are five mammals, three reptiles, two fish, yet only one bird and no amphibians. Now, often it's regular people that suggest potential state symbols to the legislators. Has no one thought to include a frog? There are three frogs native to Florida that are threatened with extinction, including the Pine Barrens tree frog that is found in the far west of the Panhandle. On the other hand, most Floridians have heard one of the state's most common animals, the pig frog, a type of bullfrog that grunts like a pig. It can be found around most lakes and rivers throughout the entire state. Now to get back to the Secretary of State. The laws don't explain in detail what role the Secretary plays as Chief Cultural Officer when it comes to the symbols. For instance, nothing on the list has any direct or even implied protections given to it beyond those that are covered by other laws, such as the Federal Endangered Species Act. Generally, it's understood that the Department of State should disseminate any information pertaining to the state of Florida which promotes the state's cultural assets. Through the Department of State's website, information about Florida's cultural assets, including state symbols, is shared with the public, and the Florida State Library and Archives maintain and make available to the public collections which include the laws and resolutions which initially created the symbols. So why do we have state symbols? In general, they represent the cultural heritage and natural treasures of the state. At their best, they include important or rare aspects. For example, the Florida panther was chosen to be the state mammal in 1982. With less than 250 in the wild, it's an important and vulnerable part of Florida's ecosystem and heritage. On the other hand, not every symbol may rise to the level of such importance. The largemouth bass became the state's freshwater fish in 2007, decades after it was chosen as the official fish for Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. Yes, it's a popular sport fish, but it's native to many other states as well as Canada and Mexico. At this point, I don't want to share too much about the symbols themselves. That's why this will be a series. In future videos, I'll go into what they are, where they can be found, and their importance to the state and its tourism industry. By the way, I'm not going to cover all 46 in this series. I'll focus on what can be called the tangible symbols. Animals, plants, minerals, and other similar things. That's a list of 24. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I post a video. Check out my other videos here and be sure to check out StingrayTom.com to see much more on the history of Florida and its tourism industry, including thousands of documents and photos. StingrayTom.com, where you can travel through time around the Sunshine State.